All the little things that we sacrifice, worthy of honour. God sees our heart. He sees the little things that we do. He sees the times that we fast and nobody else knows about it. He sees the things that we, we pray and get up in the middle of the night and lose sleep and nobody else knows about it. God honours our sacrifices. God honours us, but he calls us to honour him. Honour is such an integral and powerful part of the kingdom of God. He wants to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth and honour is so very, very important. We've got to understand how this little bit of thing that's so powerful works in the kingdom as we honour one another. You know, back in the beginning, when, when God created man, he, he sent him down to a battlefield. Uh, you know, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Well, where did he go? <laughs> he came down here. Satan was already in the garden when God created man. He sent us to a battlefield. And God said to man, you know, these are the boundaries. You're allowed to do this, that. You can do anything you like, but don't eat of that tree over there. And that was the instruction to man. But we see right in the very beginning... In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1, we see this interesting thing. Where's Genesis gone? Just after index, that's it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. The serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And in this very question, we see the seeds of dishonour towards God. We see the seed of rebellion is in dishonour. The, the seed of this thing. God said that if you eat of that tree, on that day you will surely die. And in the seeds of dishonour was the death of man. And when they disobeyed, they were kicked out of the garden, out of the presence of God, out of relationship with God, and they spiritually died. That connection with God was broken. And it took a while for the natural outworking of that, for their physical bodies to die, but the spiritual thing happened then when they dishonoured God and disobeyed and fell into disobedience, all the disses. And the thing that I want to point out is, is that the opposite to honour is dishonour. That from honour flows life. When God spoke to, to Moses and he gave him the Ten Commandments, he said there's Ten Commandments. The first few, the first four I think it is, honour God, don't have any other gods. Don't blaspheme, keep the Sabbath day. But the first commandment with promise Here's the thing about laws, that it's very difficult to legislate for what is right. We can legislate for what is wrong, but it's very hard to legislate to do righteousness, for righteousness. But here we have a law which tells us to do what is right. God considers honour so important, he put it in the Ten Commandments. And it says, verse 12 of Exodus chapter 20, Honour your mother and father, and here is the promise, that your days may be long on the earth. Life flows from honour. There is something powerful that flows from honour. Life flows from it. When there's dishonour, there is death. But where there is honour, there is life. There is something spiritual connected here. Life flows when we honour. Are you hearing this? So it's such an important thing that we've got to embrace and become part of the kingdom. One of the challenges that we have in Australia is that we have a few things in our culture that um, I heard a, a visiting pastor once say, he said, you know, Australia was birthed from convicts, from the spirit of rebellion, and he said it's still alive and well. <laughs> that, that we have this dishonouring thing. In some cases, it's the tall poppy syndrome. If somebody rises up, we cut them down. Somebody steps up, oh, you know, we just you know, we can't let them get too high. We have this thing where we don't necessarily honour those in authority. But we don't honour 
our, our Prime Minister. I was speaking with a fellow the other day about, you know, you're watching the news about climate thing, something or other, and I said, what do you think of climate change? And he went, it's all Scott Morrison's fault. I thought, what has he got to do with it? <laughs> I don't know. He just didn't like him. He wanted to dishonour him. And, and, and so, but we've got to understand that life flows from honour. We've got to honour our mother and father here. The responsibility is not upon the mother and father to do well. Hello? I'm quiet in here. The responsibility is upon the sons and the daughters to honour the mother and father. Even if you've got a bad mother and father. God is the father after whom every father on earth is named. And if you have had a bad relationship with your father, it's so easy to translate that towards God. That we think God is bad because he's a dad. He's a father. But God is a good dad. He's a good father. His goodness is running after me. He's chasing me. He, he's, he hunts me down. He looks after me. He, he's, he's looking for the best for me. He wants you, friends. He loves you. He, he's, he's trying to bring you into this place where it will bring you into transformation and wholeness. But honour flows, life flows from honour. We've got to have this thing inside of us which wants to honour. We have this Australian thing which says, if you're my mate, I'll, you know, I'll just pay out on you a bit. Sledging, we call it. Well, there's lots of other names. I mean, Australians, we're pretty good at it. Hello? Am I touching some points here? I'm trying to point out that this might be Australian culture, but it's not kingdom culture. Kingdom culture is what we want to embrace. We want to embrace the values of heaven. We want to bring the values of heaven onto earth. We want revival. But what's it going to look like if it's just the same as it all? Nothing changes. We've got to bring the values of heaven to earth. And one of the outstanding values of heaven is honour. That we honour one another. That we honour each other. Listen to this. Why do you think the devil had a go at men? Why? Couldn't he just have left us alone? Let me show you a verse here from Isaiah chapter 14. And I'll show you why. Isaiah is one of the major prophets after Psalms, Proverbs. Isaiah chapter 14. Wouldn't it be good if we didn't have a devil? <laughs> And verse 12 says this, Isaiah is prophesying about the devil, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. The devil wants to be like God. That's what he wants, the five I wills of the devil. I will be like the most high. But here's the thing. I read back in Genesis chapter 1. This is so powerful. Genesis chapter 1. Let me go back to Genesis. Verse 26, here's Lucifer, one of the archangels in heaven, worshipping God. They say he was one of the cherubim, one of the three you know, top angels who stood around the throne of God with the, with the wings outstretched, worshipping God around the presence of God. But he said, no, I want to be like God. I will ascend. I will sit on the, on the sides of the north. I will be the mighty one. But this is what God said in verse 26. He said, let us make man in our image. <laughs> let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Let them have dominion. And here we are, friends, 
you and I are created in the image of God. We're created in his image. We have his likeness. We have dominion on the earth. The devil doesn't have dominion. You do. You have dominion. We have been given this beautiful privilege of representing God. Monica, you're made in the image of God. David, you're in the image of God. You are in the, made in his image. Tanil, you're made in his image. We are made in the image of God and we are built to carry the attributes of God. We have a fallen nature, but then Jesus comes along and we receive Christ and if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are of God. We can now represent Christ. We carry his attributes. We can do the things that God does. Jesus came and he lived a life and began to live like God on earth, having dominion and having authority, having faith and the ability to make a difference wherever he went. You and I are called to live like that, to represent Christ. We have his nature, we have his image, we have his attributes, we have the divine nature of God in us when we receive Christ. I'm a partaker of his divine nature. I can now live and represent and live like Jesus on earth because I am his body, I am his hands, his feet on this footstool that is the earth. I am his feet, I'm representing Christ living as he lives on this earth. Hello? We are, we are his representatives, friends. <laughs> That's why the devil doesn't like you. <laughs> That's why. Not because he's anything special, because you are. You are special. You are created in his image. You are formed in his likeness. You and I have the ability to operate like God. How does God operate? Well, one of the ways that God operates is by faith. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. We have the attributes of God. We have ability to hear the voice of God. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. We are able to hear God. Hello? We can hear. In John chapter 3 it says, unless you are born again, no man can see the kingdom of heaven. We have the ability to see what God sees. Hello? We can see like God. We can see into the spirit world and have faith and then we begin to operate out of these senses that we have from God, the five spiritual senses, the ability to hear, the ability to see, the ability to taste. The Bible says in Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. We have these spiritual attributes and we can begin to speak. Proverbs 18 says, life and death is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat its fruit. You and I have the ability to speak to the spirit world. John 6, 63, Jesus said, My words are spirit and they are life. You and I can speak spiritual life and carry the power and unction of heaven. You and I represent God. Are you hearing me today? See, we're made in his image. We have the ability to speak. Oh, you know, the only other thing that can form words, the only other animal is a parrot. You know, they say some monkeys can do sign language and things and every other animal squeaks and squawks and makes a grunt or a noise and parrots, can all they can do is parrot. They can copy, but they don't have the ability to speak words of life, to speak out of their spirit, to speak and bring a change. Jesus says, if you can speak to the mountain, it shall be removed. That's why Australia's flat and New Zealand's just over there. <laughs> Sorry, Ray. <laughs> We're created in his image. That's why the devil has a go at you. Not because he wants to be somebody, uh, uh, he, he wants what you already have. You already have the attributes of God. We're created and are built, able to walk and operate like God. The ability to speak in faith. The ability to have dominion on the earth. We're called to walk in this, friends. That's what we're called to walk in. It's not something that God set aside for somebody special, some pastor or somebody. No, he set it aside for his body, 
If you have received Christ, that's you. That's you. That's you. That's you, William. That's you, Joe. That's you. We are called to walk in this. Life flows from honor. There is so much in this. It's so, it's so deep, this subject, that life flows when we have honor. When we honor one another, when we speak words of honor, when we speak words of life, rather than this sledging thing we have going on, where we pull one another down. You know, when I was dating and courting my wife, uh, I gave her a compliment. And she said, don't say that. I can't remember what it was. I said it was something good, I'm sure. <laughs> she said, don't say that. She said, I don't like flattery. And we had this little discussion about this. <laughs> we did. I said, dear, how can I compliment you? How can I say something positive to you? How can I affirm you? How can I honour you if whatever I say is thrown back as flattery? And she thought about it, and we had a discussion, and I got permission from Deb to tell this story. Because I want to honour my wife. I'm not dishonouring her. I'm just saying we had this discussion. And this was Deb's comment. She says, I came from a relationship where I never received a positive comment. And so she didn't know how to receive it. We were singing praise and worship to God this morning, weren't we? Husbands, for those of you that are husbands, it won't hurt you occasionally to sing a love song to your wife. I won't ask how long since you've had it. <laughs> Life flows from honour. Life flows. And now, you know, you've heard me if you've been in this church for a while, you've heard me publicly affirm my wife. Life flows from honour. It's such a good thing. When I was down with, with uh, my wife and, and uh, visiting her mother, I said something positive to Deb, and her mother arced up. It says, no, Deb said something positive to me. She said something positive about me. Her mother arced up. Goes, Don't say that, you'll give him a swelled head. Look, friends, we as Australians do not suffer from swelled heads by overabundance of affirmation and praise. It's not part of our culture to give honour, except on Anzac Day. And I think that we should do it more often. I think that we should have a greater culture of honour, <laughs> respect, loving one another, building one another, speaking words of life to one another, building one another, it's so powerful when somebody comes and builds you and affirms you and encourages you. It's a powerful thing. Life flows from honour. Life flows to this. Life flows. I'd be going through the ringer when I was a pastoring and trying to build a little church out in country New South Wales and having a hard time there. And, and uh, the uh, state chairman of the time would say to me, that's your best mate, he would say to me, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. That would keep me going for six months. Because a word of affirmation has power. Life is in your, in your tongue. There is life to be able to speak words of honour and encouragement, build one another. Are you hearing where I'm coming from? See, this is not just about, you know, uh, uh, at one special day of the year. It should be part of our whole journey, our continual building people. When the people, somebody speaks prophetic, Sharon, I have heard you prophesy and speak to people, and I've heard such incredible feedback from those people that say, that just spoke to me so very, very powerfully. It was accurate and was sharp, and it helped me so much. When you get a prophetic word, it's God. The, test the Bible says the spirit of prophecy and testimony of Jesus. It's Jesus speaking to you, honoring you. You get a prophetic word, and sometimes it speaks just to that little seed of God inside of you. There may be nothing on the outside that looks anything like what God is saying, but it's God honoring and imparting life into your spirit. 
Hello? <clears throat> I went through a difficult time. It's, I don't want to go over the testimony, but just give this example when I was in such a dark place and I, and I was just full of grief. I went to a men's camp down on the, where was it? Somewhere down New South Wales. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to hide in a corner. And this visiting speaker came to me, and this is a word that he gave to me. He said, you are full of joy, and you're going to just liberate and bring joy wherever you go. And, you know, I was a mess. He saw something that I just didn't even think was in there. But that's the power of the word of God that comes and imparts life. He's the life giver. So when that prophetic word comes, there's such honor in that. He draws out the gold on the inside of us. He draws out and speaks to that which it's, is divine so it can grow and flourish on the inside of us. There is power with a, with a life flow of heaven when those gifts operate. I had another time when I was just sitting at home during all this lockdown and I was having, we were having an online church service. There were maybe 35, 40 people there. There weren't many watching and... and uh, our friend from America was preaching. He had a word of knowledge. And he said, there's somebody watching and you've got a broken toe. And I just broke my toe. Now, you wouldn't think, what's, what's the point of that? But you know what that so powerfully spoke to me? Is that God was very, very aware and considerate of me. That he loved me. He knew all about me. He's on my side. He's for me. He's not against me. He's on my journey. He knows even my little broken toe. See, God is for us. He's such a good God. And he wants to impart life to us. And life flows through honor. But sometimes it seems as though we have these windscreen wipers, like Deb used to have. You know, you want to give me honor, you want to affirm me, I'll just wipe that off. I don't want to accept that. I can't receive honor. I can't receive somebody saying positive to me. I can't receive you giving me something uplifting. I don't want to receive that. You know, I'll just get a swelled head. I'll just, you know, I'm not nobody special. I'm, I'm not something, anybody. Friends, you're made in the image of God. Here's the thing. If you have received Christ, where is Christ? He's in me. Is that right? You and I, brothers and sisters, we've got the same dad in heaven, the born of God. So if Jesus is in you, Michael, if Jesus is in you, how should I treat you? I should treat you. That's right. I'm answering. Listen. I should treat you like I treat Jesus because Jesus is in you. That's how we should treat one another because Jesus is in us. And if you find somebody that does not have Jesus in them, well, guess what? They're also made in the image of God and we should also treat them with honour. And if they're not representing God and behaving like God, they still have the potential to be representatives because they're made in his image and when you begin to speak honor towards one another and begin to speak life towards one another it's amazing what comes out you know the bible says love those who persecute you bless them pray for those who persecute you and if we begin to bring honor and bring life and bring the grace of god and bring the power of god to those as neil said to me last week there's a little spark in everybody and if you begin to speak to that and bring it forth then it's amazing how it can flourish and blossom and grow as we honour one another. I do have some notes here somewhere. <laughs> Look at this verse. Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 to 26. Just to prove it's in the New Testament somewhere. Matthew 20, 25. Jesus called his disciples. <laughs> he said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. 
but whosoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. A servant honours and empowers those around them. When you empower people around you, you lift them up. You honour them, you develop them, you help them, you encourage them, you speak words of life. It's about serving one another, not about being the boss. You know, And so as Christians, we should be the ones representing Christ with the character and the nature and the values of heaven, honouring one another and speaking words to one another and life to one another, honouring those that are in authority. Isn't that true? We've got to represent, speak words of life. Honour our pastors. Why? Because they're the boss? No, because they serve. Honour them. Here's another one. Matthew 10, 41. Go back a few chapters. Matthew 10. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So this is about honour. You're receiving a prophet, then, uh, you know, honour them. Honour those in authority. Honour a... I don't, I'm not thinking about this. What is a prophet's reward? I know what a Levite's reward was. There were 12 tribes in Israel and the Levites were the priesthood. They were not allowed to partake of any of the inheritance of the other 11 tribes. The land was split up between those 11 tribes and those 11 tribes had to pay their tithes to the Levites. So the Levites actually got 110%. 11 times 10, that's how it worked. So the Levites were honoured with greater wealth than the other tribes, even though they had no land and they didn't have to work the land. But the Bible says their reward was entering into the presence of God. And I believe a prophet's reward is that intimacy with God. Intimacy, the ability to hear the voice of God and enter intimacy of relationship with God. That's a prophet's reward. They've got that special place with God. And if we honour a prophet, it will help us in our relationship with God. Life flows from honour. There is such power as we honour. We honour one another, honour those who serve. Uh, the Bible says a few more things about it. Let's look at a couple of these verses very, very quickly. How we relate makes such an incredible difference when you honour. I was in a church and uh, the pastor was taking the church in a direction that I didn't want to go. But I wanted to honour the man even though I didn't agree with him. And here's the thing, when we build this into our culture, it changes how we resolve conflict and how we deal with confrontation, how we deal with people that are going through problems if we honour them. So I went to him and said, look, I, I can't agree, I can't go with where you're going as a church, uh, but you know, I, I don't want to be that person in the church that's just causing strife. So I want to leave graciously and bless you as we go. And he was so grateful that I did that because he just had a string of people give him a blast for not agreeing with him. And so I, you know, he said, you can come back any time. So the door was still open there because I left with honour. It changes how we relate. This is what we're supposed to do as Christians, to bring honour and bring a, a shift in how we resolve and how we work through confrontation and conflict. It's different if you honour one another. But what we do is we fall into the trap of dishonouring when we don't like the, the person we have conflict with. We start to respond and react out of offence and hurt rather than honouring that other person. Is this making sense? See, this makes an incredible difference in your world, where you live, at home, in your family, when you have honour in your heart. It's not just about what happens in church. It's about how we influence our world around us and bring in the honour and the life of God and bring in transformation. Revival is when God shows up in a church and the presence of God is revived, or the people are revived in the presence of God. Revival uh, is such a powerful thing. Reformation happens when God turns up in his presence and power in a nation. But when that begins to happen and the values shift, then we have transformation. And a nation is transformed. We're believing for that, friends. 
It's what we do on a Tuesday night when we pray, believing for the power of God to come in such a great and mighty way, not just about having a better church. It's about having significant influence and bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. Are you hearing this? Come on, honour is part of it. Honour is so very, very powerful. Here's, a, here's some more verses that tell us the same thing. First uh, Peter 2.17 1 Peter 2.17 says this. Here it is. Honour all people. When you look at somebody else and you see, realise that they're made in the image of God, it's easier to honour them. Because <laughs> we can honour God because he's perfect, so we can honour his creation because, you know, sometimes it isn't. We still should honour people. Honour all people. Love our family. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honour the king. Honour is such a powerful attribute that the life of God flows through it. You attach one of the Ten Commandments to it and he brings life wherever it is. Uh, here's, here's a good one. First Timothy. Where's Timothy gone? Put it up there, I'll read it off here. First Timothy 5.17 Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honour, especially those who labour in the word and doctrine. So those who labour in the word and doctrine are worthy of double honour. But we can get so ingrained in our Australian culture that we don't honour our pastors and leaders. We take the sword to them. Have roast pasta for lunch. <laughs> Please don't roast me. I've been cooked enough. <laughs> Honour is what comes out of your mouth. But what comes out of your mouth has got to come out of your heart. If it's not in your heart, just close your mouth, don't say anything. Fake honour is no good. That doesn't work either. Hello? That just becomes religious. I went to a church and, and they, they would just force this honour upon the pastor. You know the honour, pastor this, pastor that, there wasn't a meeting that didn't go by where they had to spend five minutes praising the pastor and I couldn't handle the fake. I didn't join, ticked all the other boxes. The fake doesn't work. It's got to come from the reality of what's in here. You're hearing this. Because life flows out of the heart. Out of the heart flow the issues of life. We want life to flow out of our mouth. Honour, affirmation, encouragement, building one another being a representative of Christ, being somebody who, who can receive it and somebody who can give it. I'm really sensing very strongly this morning that there are some people who have just felt so dishonoured. And I'll come back to this, I think. That there, is, there are some people who have not had their self-worth affirmed because of some of the things that has destroyed your self-worth is not necessarily only what other people are speaking, it's how you speak to yourself. That you don't honour yourself. I'm going to pray for this in a, in a minute. Last verse, Revelation chapter 5. <laughs> I've got more verses. This is the last one. It'll do. Revelation chapter 5. We've gone from the front of the book to the end. From index to maps. <laughs> We've gone all the way. <laughs> Revelations chapter 5, verse 13. <laughs> Here was the saints, the 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands of them, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and blessing in every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea. And all that are in them I heard saying, blessing and honour and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Be to him. He's worthy of honour. He is worthy of honour. He is our God who has given us uh, through his great sacrifice. For that reason, we honour, we love him, 
we worship him. We've honoured those who have sacrificed of their lives this morning. We honour you. And we should honour one another and let the life of God begin to flow through it. I, I, I do believe that there are some people here and you've felt like sometimes your own uh, self-worth has just been hammered because of, of, of what people have been spoken to you, what your father has spoken to you, what those in authority have spoken to you, what you have said to yourself, what you have agreed with. The Bible says that we are created in his image. We are representatives of him. Christ is in us. God is for you, friends. God is for you. He is not against you. He is for you. And he wants to build you and encourage you. Friends, if you have identify with that, if that is speaking to you this morning, some of those things that have gotten on the inside and you felt, you know, that you, <laughs> some of you feel so unworthy you don't feel you can respond. Jesus, I break that right now. Break its power. Break its lie. It's a lie, friends. You are worthy because he has made you worthy. Christ in you is the hope of glory. It's about Christ in you and he is worthy of honour. And because of that, then so are you. If that's you, if you feel, you know, there's some heartache going on there, please respond, please come. Let me pray with you. Let me believe God for you and with you. Who's that? Who feels like that? Who's got that stuff going on? Come on. Come on, sweetie. There's a few of us here. <laughs> Self-worth. Come on, you can come. Self-worth. You're made in the image of God. Yes, you. You're made in the image of God. You have great value. There's more here, I know. <laughs> there are some fathers here who feel like your children have dishonoured you. Let me pray with you. Let me believe with you. Let the grace of God come around about your life. God wants to honour. He wants to let that flow. There are some of you who feel like your fathers have have abandoned you. God wants to touch you as well. Would you come? I don't think I'm wrong. I feel God touching this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This stuff is, you know, if you just allow me to take a little bit of time, it, it's so incredibly personal that what we're bringing towards God today because it just impacts us so very, very much. It's about that stuff that nobody else knows about, the things of the heart and the home. God loves us, and he wants to bring wholeness to all that as well. The truth is, you know, I need it just as much as the next person. And God is good to me. I'm just, thank you, so very, very grateful. Father, I, I would like it if the Bible says, honour all people. Can we do this? Can we turn to somebody I mean, husbands and wives, you can do this. But also, you know, turn to somebody that's next to you or find somebody and speak words of honour and affirmation. Encourage somebody today. Speak words of life. Bless somebody. Just bless somebody. Represent today. Carry this honour. Let's begin right now. Let's begin to speak words of honour. That's it. Let the honour flow. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let the life and the spirit of it flow between you today. <laughs>